Prior to this meeting, each member of our group reviewed the patient case in question. We each identified areas of concern as well as places we could intervene, taking into account our professional background, whether that be in pharmacy or in nursing. The hope was to enhance overall patient care outcomes. The following video depicts that meeting in which we share our thoughts and offer our professional input. I'm a nursing student at MCPHS University. I'm Alina and I'm a pharmacy student. And I'm Nargis, I'm a pharmacy student as well. And I present to you our uh, IPE video presentation. Today we'll be presenting our collaborative efforts in creating a plan of care for HR. HR is a 58-year-old woman that comes to the pharmacy and complains of feeling tired and foggy every day even though she gets a good night's sleep every night. She has noticed impaired memory and gained 20 pounds over the last six months with no change in her diet or exercise plan. Patient complains of feeling bad when taking her medication, which is why she only takes the medication two to three days prior to her PCP appointment. The two to three days that she does take the medications, she feels so dizzy upon standing and sick to her stomach that she stays in bed almost the entire day. However, because of this, the patient is unable to babysit her grandchildren on those days each month. Afraid of being scolded at the doctor's office, she tells him that she takes her medications all the time. However, almost every time she goes to the doctor, he adds more medications for her to take. Um, since she feels so out of it when, on the days that she does take her medications, she says there's no chance that she could take them every day because she would have to be in bed all day and her grandkids would have to go to daycare. The patient admits to taking her thyroid medication regularly since it actually helps her feel a little bit better unlike the other medications. However, even with this medication, she still feels fatigued, foggy, and she's noticed that she's becoming a little bit forgetful. Her fatigue is affecting her daily activities, which is forcing her to be inactive for most of the day. The patient's past medical history includes hyperlipidemia, hypertension, diabetes, obesity, hypothyroidism, chronic pain, which uh, occurred after a fall in 2005, depression, and anxiety. Family history includes liver cancer, oral cancer, and hypertension. Uh, the social history, she does not smoke or drink, and she denies illicit drug use. Uh, there is no known drug allergies, and uh, her medication list includes atorvastatin 20 milligrams by mouth daily, metformin 500 milligrams by mouth twice daily, Glyburide, 5 mg by mouth every morning. Amlodipine, 10 mg by mouth daily. Uh, clonidine, 0.1 mg by mouth twice daily. Lisinopril, 5 mg by mouth daily. Amitriptyline, 50 mg by mouth daily. Clonazepam, 1 mg by mouth twice daily. Levothyroxine, 150 micrograms by mouth daily. Keterolac, 10 milligrams by mouth every six hours as needed for pain. Mm -hmm. And uh, cyclobenzaprine, 10 milligrams by mouth twice daily. The review of symptoms, she is positive for fatigue, constipation, diarrhea, dry skin, and dizziness. The physical exam, her vital signs, the temperature is 35 degrees Celsius. Her blood pressure is 167 over 103. Her heart rate is 50 and her respiratory rate is 12. Um, her height is 5'5 and her weight is 202 pounds and her BMI uh, turns out to be 33.6, which is obese. Um, she is well appearing Caucasian woman. Um, her skin is dry, cool, and rough. Uh, she is negative for thyroid nodules and enlargements and she is alert and oriented times 3. But we do not have laboratory data but we would like to see A1C and blood sugar for her diabetes, mm -hmm. and we would also like to see TSH, T4, and T3 for her thyroid. Mm -hmm. And that concludes the patient case. After collaborating with each other, we've come up with a list of problems we'd like to address regarding that chronic pain. I was asked to soak diabetes. And I was asked to soak hypothyroidism. We, as pharmacy students, will be looking at these problems through the medication-related perspective. 
and I, as a nursing student, will be addressing them through the perspective of nursing care. So one of the problems that we identified was a medication dosing regimen not optimal. Um, the metformin dose should be increased from 500 milligrams BID to 1,000 milligrams BID for maximal benefits. I would contact the doctor and ask for a dose increase for better outcomes for this patient. I think this is perfect because it matches the guidelines for maximal effective dose. Okay. Um, also, I think that the levothyroxine dose should be increased from 150 micrograms to 175 in order to get the thyroid hormones within normal range and decrease the signs and symptoms of her fatigue. Mm -hmm. um, I would contact the doctor and ask for a dose increase given that her thyroid hormones are not within range and correlate with hypothyroidism. From a nursing perspective, seeing that the patient has hypothyroidism, I would educate the client on the signs and symptoms of her disease, um, such as fatigue, foggy mind, dry skin, muscle weakness, and impaired memory, so that she can contact her PCP um, if she if needed. Okay, that sounds perfect. Um, another issue that we found was an adverse drug uh, reaction. Undesirable signs and symptoms related to drug therapy is observed. The patient complains of hypoglycemia-like symptoms, such as dizziness and diarrhea, during the periods when she takes her medications, I would explain to the patient why her medications are making her sick in a patient-friendly language and how to possibly cope with that. Great. I think um, in this situation, the most important role of nursing is patient teaching. Mm -hmm. I would teach the client how to use her glucometer mm -hmm. and keep a log of her sugar readings. And I would educate her on the signs and symptoms of hypoglycemia, such as sweating, flushed skin, shakiness, disorientation, hunger, irritability, and blurred vision. Mm -hmm. um, I would further instruct her to always carry hard candy with her that she can pop in her mouth anytime she starts experiencing these signs. Mm -hmm. That's what I heard. Um, also, since she mentioned dizziness, um, I would do further teaching on fall prevention because that puts her at high risk for falls. Uh, I would teach her to always make sure she has adequate lighting in her home, to not have scatter rugs around, mm -hmm. and to change positions slowly so she doesn't experience signs and symptoms of hypo orthostatic hypotension. I think mm -hmm. that's perfect. Um, also, another problem that we encountered is that the patient is non-adherent due to lack of education about her disease state. Mm -hmm. She takes all her prescribed medication just two to three days before her PCP appointment um, and clueless about the role and importance of her medication. I would explain to the patient the importance of her medication to her health to improve adherence. Also, because of this non-adherence, the PCP continually increases her doses and adds additional medication thinking that the current medications aren't working when the patient takes all of her medications at once prior to her appointment, she's experiencing excessive ingestion of the medications. Um, I would contact the doctor and have him start a whole new treatment regimen because she was never actually adherent to the medication from the beginning, so I think if we started again with just one medication for a disease state, that might benefit her greatly. Mm -hmm. um, I'd educate the client on the importance of adhering to her medication mm -hmm. regime and explain to her that the reason she might be feeling these signs and symptoms might be because she's taking them all at once two to three days before and not right. continually. Um, maybe I could give her such tips as organizing her pills in a day of the week pill box to make it more accessible, um, increase adherence, and decrease the overwhelming ingestion of the medication. That's great. Also, another problem that we found is that the patient needs additional follow-up with her provider and um, additional laboratory monitoring. Um, the thyroid hormones need to be monitored to ensure that they are within range to decrease signs and symptoms. Mm -hmm. Also, the patient's A1C level um, should be monitored to ensure blood sugars are within normal limits, and this is a great test to also tell us if um, her non-adherence has improved, mm -hmm. since it does take into account the blood glucose of the last three months. So we as pharmacists would monitor the lab results to ensure progress of treatment and control of the disease state with the medication. We would also advise the patient to see her PCP to work on an optimal uh, dose regimen to minimize the side effects that she was feeling while um, optimizing her uh, treatment and quality of life. From a nursing perspective, I would educate the client on how to regularly monitor her uh, blood sugar levels and keep an eye out for any abnormal signs and symptoms, mm -hmm. and to always keep communications open and honest with her PCP. Right. Right. Um, so in conclusion, it is absolutely necessary for healthcare professionals to inter-collaborate to achieve optimal patient care. To establish a climate of shared values and mutual respect necessary to meet patient care needs, we allowed the opportunity for clear and open communication between all healthcare providers. We respected the expertise each profession brought to the table and collaborated to attain solutions 
or concerns associated with our client. 